looking so OP. Transformation and abilities explain Ari Furuta skip content from any news. Let's see what he has to say. I'm gonna be honest. It took a little bit longer than expected, but finally we can finish off episode one of Ari Furuta's uh, Okay, content. we're still on episode one. So starting from where we left off last episode, Hajime awakes to find himself partly submerged in a small river. Wondering how he survived the fall, he looks up to see that there were- This is straight up the intro of episode 1. Like, like this is straight up how the audience was immediately shown to the anime. Not aware of what the fuck just happened before. Like, if you didn't read the manga, if you didn't watch episode 0, well, how the fuck would you know what's going on? A series of waterfalls that created a stream towards his current location. He figured that he must have been swept up by these waterfalls and just followed the current down. It took him a while to get up. The manga art is so much better than the anime. But once he did, he warmed himself and dried his clothes using the basic flare spell. A task that was a lot harder for him than you'd think. He then made his way through the twisting tunnels of this unexplored cave. It was a whole lot different in comparison to the rectangular passageways of the upper floors. So he really had no idea what he was doing or where he was going. Eventually, he came across the rabbit, which- Oh my god! Dude, the- He- the rabbit looks demented, but also, why are you fucking showing your gear to me? But this rabbit, the one of the most important encounters, I think it's actually fitting that the first magic that we learn, I think it's the rabbit, right? We kill the rabbit and we eat him, and we get air dance. And this air dance is still used in season two. Some of the other magic we've learned gets power scaled out. It got power creep, but air dance, it's still there, baby. Which, after taking out the two wolves, Hashime thought it to be much stronger than the behemoth on the 65th floor. Is the rabbit stronger than the behemoth? At least the behemoth's moves were predictable. As for the rabbit, it was far too quick for his eyes to even follow. Everything after the- The wolf? Not the, no, the wolf is like electric city or something. No, no, no. The rabbit gives you the air, the air dance. The, air, the rabbit gives you air dance. Oh, you mean the order of which in which we got the skills. Yeah, maybe it was the wolf first. This point, up till Hajime transmutes himself into a hole, is pretty much the same. So if we start from there, we see that Hajime has passed out after using too much mana, only to wake up feeling revitalized after drinking drops of liquid from what's called That main character moment right here, baby. Main character moment. This is uh, some plot armor. Divinity Stone. Woo! These are large clumps of mana that pool together and crystallized over the course of a thousand years. Pretty much, he can just eat monsters, he'll almost die, but this thing won't let him die, therefore the monsterization process over and over again. Repeated, like, life or death situations, right? Then, after a few hundred more, the saturation of mana will start to liquefy and pour back into the earth. This liquid was known as ambrosia, and it could heal any and all wounds, Busted. supposedly even extend one's life so long as they continue to drink it, thus granting it the name of the elixir of life. Legends claim that even Ahit used ambrosia to heal the masses, what? though there was a couple things that sounds kind of like a really important plot. Is that the ambrosia couldn't heal, severed limbs, hunger, and thirst. This is important to know because it had been four days since Hajime fell from the bridge. And because he was too scared to leave the hole that he was hiding in, he hadn't eaten since. Sure, the ambrosia would heal any physical damage, but, but it hunger. couldn't remove the pain or sensation of hunger and thirst. It became this brutal cycle in and out of Holy shit, again, the manga art just makes this show, the series, so much more epic and dramatic. The anime, I don't think, did it justice at all. As his pain would Holy constantly shit. wake him up Look anytime at this. his fatigue brought him to sleep. All he could do was stay awake with his thoughts. This is so morbid, that's not how I felt in the anime. Thinking, why did this happen to me? Six more days went by, and his thoughts of why me slowly turned darker and darker. He began to question why no one was coming for him. Why he had to be- No one will come for you because you gotta save yourself. You're the fucking main character, bro. Ain't nobody gonna fucking reach out with the helping hand saying, Here, I'll save you. Nah, -uh, it's not that kind of show. Betrayed. Why he had to suffer for their sake. All he wanted to do was live. And he began to think that anyone who would hinder that simple mindset was the enemy. Feelings- It's crazy that even with these thoughts, that he's still not going after vengeance against Daisuke. ...of anger and hatred began to fill his mind for days on end. But soon Damn. after that, they slowly began to fade. He began to see how it was pointless to be trapped over such petty feelings. He knew that no matter how much he raged, it would neither stop the pain nor get him out of this situation. But finally, all of these emotions began to fade from his heart. Even his feelings towards the one person who treated him kindly. <laughs> Be gone, thought I don't remember you anymore. <laughs> began to serve no purpose within him. The only feeling that bubbled to the surface was this urge to survive. A will that turned to resolve, and a resolve that formed itself into a sharp point that was- What the fuck? This- are we watching the same- like, is this the same series?
the more I see manga art, the more I realize the potential of what Arifurata could have been. Would cut past anything in its path. This is honestly ruining the anime for me now, bro. Now it's just like my expectations are just so high. But I already know what the anime is like. What the it fuck? It brought forth this desire to kill. Though not one that was based off of hostility. No, this was all for the sake of living. Anyone who threatened his life was an enemy. And any enemy had to be killed. It was at this point that the former Hajime ceased to exist. The one who would put himself in danger for the sake of others. Yeah, the fuck that shit. The one who Kaori had come to adore. Fuck you, that Kaori. That person was gone. I'm kidding. What was left was a new Hajime that was willing to slaughter anything that stood in his path. Though he knew he was too weak to simply challenge the monsters that inhabited this floor. What he needed now was to train. Given that he had an- You know what? This like changing character development was so fast. It was done in like episode one, but I'm so glad. Because episode zero, we were introduced to this bitch ass character who's just so fucking weak and limp. But then in the span of one episode, immediate fucking 180, he just becomes ruthless. I was actually very happy about that. Infinite supply of mana sitting right next to him, he trained his transmutation skills 24-7. Working on speed, precision, and range. Mastering everything there was to know about- While you guys were out there partying, I was studying the art of the transmute. About this basic ability that he was given. After wait, 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 wait. This- Okay, so I was right. So in the most recent video that I'll post after today's stream, Yue uses a technique called, like, the five divine dragons or something against, uh, Farid. And I was like, hold up, isn't this, like, a callback to one of the dragon skills that we saw in the labyrinth? Then this is specifically that, right? We're using the same thing, right? Given. After days of training his abilities, they had actually vastly improved, and he was now able to transmute from a distance- the angle of this is kind of sus, bro. What the fuck is a transmute located at? ...of over three meters away. Unfortunately, simply creating pitfalls filled with spikes wouldn't be enough to kill these high-leveled monsters. You see, the stronger a monster, the tougher their hide. So what do we do? We dr we lure them, and we... What do we throw in the fucking pit to kill them? Swords or knives wouldn't be enough to pierce their skin. Hajime had to think outside the box. So he created a drill, and used that as a oh. way to penetrate the hides of the monsters. Oh, I completely forgot about it. What the fuck? In the manga, it looks way more fucking brutal here too, huh? Monsters he trapped. At long last, Hajime had food. And he feasted for hours on the flesh of the monsters he had slain. You can just but see the desperation. Just like the anime, by the end of it, it had caused nothing but pain. The only thing that kept him alive was the constant intake of ambrosia. This phenomenon that Hajime was currently going through... Hey, yo. That back arc kind of crazy. ...going through was known as overcompensation. Overcompensation. It's when the body repeated life and death like near death situations. It needs to adjust itself because it can't compensate for the changes happening inside of it. Bro, look at him. Look at this art. Hajime was experiencing overcompensation because it's a known fact that monster meat is poisonous to humans. Mm. It's because the mana crystals within their blood allow the monster's organs to directly mana crystals within their blood. The, mo the monster's mana crystal. Okay. Interface with magic, giving them their superior physical strength since mana literally flows through their veins. This is how we're able to do incantationless casting. Because everyone else has to do, they have to, it's, it's always funny to me when I see opponents like use magic. They're just sitting there for like two minutes, just like, just yapping, just talking the entire time. Well, Hazmi doesn't need to do that because the way that he gained magic, right? The, the, the same way that the monster doesn't need to use uh, incantations. This mana can't be ingested by humans, because it would destroy their cells from the inside out. The human body simply isn't Oof. capable of handling it. Numerous people had attempted in the past, and all died. The only reason Hajime survived ambrosia. was because of the ambrosia he drank to constantly yep. repair his dying cells. So what we saw was Hajime's body being constantly broken and repaired, until finally his frail body was forced to transform into something stronger. His screams of pain were- This is straight up like limit break in Dragon Ball. Like what's it called? Like Zenkai boost or something? It's like whenever you get close to your near death situation and you recover, you become so much stronger. Akin to the cries like, of a repeated over baby. and over. And just like that, after those excruciating moments, Hajime was reborn. Both- New hairstyle too, yep. <laughs> New haircut too, yep. Physically and mentally. His hunger faded and the pain from his missing arms- This art kind of reminds me of Ragnar Crimson. Subsided. In fact, he felt no pain at all, just much lighter and overwhelmed by the newfound power flowing within him. When he looked at his body, he saw that he was much more built, and even a little bit taller, <laughs> and your hairstyle at too. least 10 centimeters taller. 
<laughs> Bro, I think again, people are saying the same shit about solo leveling. It's like, you know, there's like two different male characters, right? There's like a little boy, and there's like a taller dude. Like, every time like a main character of these kind of shows gets like a power up, they don't just get new power, they get an entirely new look, right? They turn into like the six foot four new hairstyle, you know, much more muscular. They just look so much better, too. Wondering what happened to him. <laughs> He focused on his arms to see these strange dark veins floating above the rest. Oh? Thinking about how gross they looked, he joked about how it was as if he turned himself into a monster. You are. Then he remembered he could just check his status plate to see his stats. Way more higher, and right? And when he pulled it up, he saw an exponential increase in- Still not. This is very interesting. Even at this point, he's still not at the level of Koki. Because Koki was about like 600 or like 800, like straight off the bat. Pretty much everything. Plus an additional three skills of Mana Manipulation, Iron Stomach, and Lightning Field. What's interesting to note though is that Hajime only went up to level 8, which- What, 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 what? Hold up. Note though is that Hajime only- Is that Hajime right there? Why does he look so saucy here? What, what the fuck? Hey yo? Is, is this Hajime? What, what, what is this <laughs> What, what? <laughs> What? He just turned into Giga Chan into a femboy. He went up to level eight. God, God damn! How did he? Oh, he got he got them breedable. <laughs> Comparatively okay, okay, speaking, right. is rather low. You see, a person's level represented the proportion of total potential that they had reached, and since Matt's level was one hundred, that meant that Hajime could get significantly more powerful. And right. And the fact that I just made a difference with Koki. Koki was like already like level fifty with like like eight hundred stats or whatever. Right. The fact that Hajime is only level eight and he has like 300 stats, that actually kind of shows like how much more he would scale when he himself gets at level 50. Especially since his stats were already so high at only level 8. Mana manipulation does pretty much as the name states. Does it everything. gives him the ability to control mana. Does fucking so everything. So having a general idea of what this did, he attempts to transmute something to test it out. As he thought, he was able to manipulate the terrain without even the need for an incantation. A trait only possible to monsters up until now. Hashime had acquired the power that was unique only to monsters. I haven't seen anyone make a, this rabbit keeps flexing his ass at me, but like I haven't seen anyone make a comment that like the human side be like, oh my god, he's doing incantationless casting or stuff like that. Still have yet to see anyone say that. And not just their mana manipulation either. There are other skills as well. There was no instructions on how they worked though. So Don't it worry took about a bit it. of time to figure out how to use the ones like Lightning Field. Eventually, he learned that he had to create a mental image of what he was trying to do in order to activate the skill. That's one of the most common explanations of how magic mechanics work. Just create a mental image and just believe and it'll just work. So, by imagining static electricity in his head, red lightning began to trail from his fingertips and wrap itself around his body. Although he couldn't fire it like a projectile, he could transfer it via direct contact. It was a pretty useful skill. So he practiced it until he could easily adjust the flow of current and the level of voltage that he could produce. Iron Stomach also did as the name suggests. Just eat whatever the fuck you want and you won't die. It basically allowed him to eat monster food okay. without going through the hellish pain he went through the first time. With this, he could finally enjoy a semi-decent meal. Especially since now he can even cook the food. I forgot, dude. Back during these days in the cave, we were just straight up just hunting down monster meat and just frying this shit up with a lightning and just eating it up. Like, those are some struggle times, man. His lightning field abilities. Now, although he was certain that he had the power to take on the bear, he decided to play it safe and spend a few more days polishing his new skills. This resulted in the unlocking of a derivative skill to his oh, transmutation, known which as is? Or Appraisal. A very high level skill that was rare even among the most royal blacksmiths. Orb. So rare that it was- Skills like this is something that you would like kind of overlook, right? You're thinking, or oh, appraisal. Who the fuck gives a shit about random ass skills like that? I want something like the Black Blade or something cool like that, right? But or appraisal, probably really important. By definition, impossible to innately possess. Okay. Only after years Cracked. of rigorous transmutation training could one obtain this skill. A bit of context to this is that appraisal magic was generally far more complex than offensive magic. Okay. It required suitably large magic circles to activate. Only academic facilities or large institutions were known to have had- So it's like super nerdy magic, but it requires a lot more complexity compared to just regular unga boonga magic. ...had appraisal magic circles. Appraisal skills, on the other hand, gave the users the ability to appraise anything within their domain of analysis. Okay. All with a small magic circle and a simple incantation. All they had to do was touch the target. Hajime knew the significance and rarity of this skill, so he used it to appraise every single ore. This is where we start to make guns, right? Or that he could find. Green glowstone, blast rock, tar stone, 
each revealed their own unique properties. And the more ores he appraised, the more ideas that Hajime came up with for his weapons. Guns, guns. For example, Blast Rock was a combustible ore. When exposed to fire, it'll burn like oil until it becomes nothing but cinders. With enough Blast Rock confined to a small space, lighting it will cause an explosion. And with enough quantity and pressure, you could create flames as strong as those created by fire magic. Uh, crazy how we had all the resources in this cave to just make all the ammunition and guns, huh? Hashime saw that this ore was very similar to gunpowder, and he immediately knew what he wanted to create. He spent Dunner. days trying to craft the weapon that he envisioned, and after thousands of failed attempts, he was- What the fuck? Did we go through that much struggle in the anime? I swear to god, Donner just spawned out of nowhere in the anime. Finally able to make himself a revolver. The gun itself was made of tar stone, a hard black rock that ranks 8 on the most scale of hardness. Mm -hmm. The bullets were also made from this ore. With these, the general idea was to use the blast rock's combustion to propel the bullets. And the lightning then, too. Then, with his lightning field skill, he would electrically accelerate his shots like a railgun. So I hear the electricity here somehow plays into the fact that there is no recoil. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but someone mentioned in the comments when I made a comment of like, Oh my god, look at him. He's just holding a sniper like this. Like, how the fuck is this going? There's no recoil, but it's like, no, actually, there's an electric magic that's going on to the point where it counteracts the momentum and impact of- I, I don't fucking know, man. Essentially making his bullets pack more punch than an anti-tank rifle. So with this revolver's creation, Hajime, a simple synergist. The pistol itself has more power than the sniper. Imagine how much power the sniper then it has. Or like even the pile driver. What can you even compare that to? Had just brought modern weaponry into this fantasy world. It was time to go hunting now. And rap What I just realized is whenever concept of guns are introduced in the world, people will try to mass produce it to sell it. There actually has not been stuff like that, which is interesting. I don't know. I thought they might touch on a topic of like, what happens if you introduce like a gun into this world, right? Are you going to then mass produce it? Are you going to sell it to people? Is everyone just going to have guns now? It's like a problem that you don't really need to introduce to the story, but it's like a fascinating one whenever you deal with like an arms race. Hobbits were next on the menu. After figuring out that eating the same monster twice didn't make him stronger, he tried to find as many different ones as he could. Once he had finished eating the rabbit, he checked his stats to see that they had improved significantly again. Okay. With even Level more 12. skills and derivative skills showing up. Air Dance was one of them. So he decided the most to test OP one. first. Air dance. When he rushed forward, he moved so fast that everything became a blur. That was likely due to the supersonic step derivative skill. So he tried making a mental image of how he thought it should be. When he leaped forward, he basically teleported face first into a wall. <laughs> it would seem that controlling his acceleration was a lot harder than he Just thought. Just flash step. But with enough training, he knew he could become faster than even the rabbit. The next test was for aerodynamics. This allowed him to create footholds in mid-air. Yeah. Not quite like invisible flying. platforms, but something similar. But how the fuck is Shea also using this? Because in the anime, bro, like right now, in, in the fight against, uh, I, I think Shea fought, uh, what's his name? The lover, the blonde dude. She was straight up just like fl floating in the air with that. So I was like, is Hajime able to give magic skills that he knows to his friends now and they can just use it? Now, even with these supposedly OP new skills, he still wasn't 100% sure that he could easily defeat the bear. He wanted to leave nothing up to chance. Leave no room for any enemy to be stronger than him. So he kept training. Day after day until he was a master of every single one of his skills. After enough time, Hashime became capable of easily traversing the dungeon at lightning speeds. Using his aerodynamics to guide himself around tight corners. With this mobility, he could have easily searched for an exit. I mean, if getting out was his main concern, then that would have been the best option. But what but was he doing Hashime instead? No, he was just farming. He was just trying to get stronger and stronger and trying to get as much more materials and different skills, right? He was driven by revenge. He wasn't going to leave. Was he driven by revenge though? Maybe at this point he still was, but I think there's a definitive moment where Hajime himself says, I don't really care. I just want to be left alone. If people come after me, I'll kill you. But for the most part, I'm not really motivated by revenge, right? The labyrinth until he killed that bear. He felt he wouldn't be able to move forward unless he proved that he was much more than a match for the monster that broke him in the past. This was now a revenge match. Eventually, he was able to find the claw bear as it was feasting on some rabbits. Wanting to set the stage as a rival rather than prey, he quickly aims and shoots at it. Unfortunately, the bear could sense Hajime's bloodlust, and it reflexively dodged the bullet, causing- That manga fights even look more cooler too, man. 
It's because of the CGI. Whenever I see, like, the CGI fights these random monsters in the labyrinth, I just never give a fuck. Like, do you guys ever give a fuck whenever we fight these random CGI monsters? For the most part, I'm watching Ari Furuta for the character interactions. Some fights are actually pretty good, right? Some fights where we're not, we're not fighting random, you know, CGI monsters, like, actual named characters. They're, they can get pretty hype. For the most part, it's just so sad that CGI monsters just kind of ruin the vibe of these monstrous looking threats what I see in the manga. That looks actually very immersive. ...it to only graze its shoulder. However, the stage was now set, and the bear knew that Hajime wasn't merely food. He was an enemy. In the novel, the bear was able to trade a Look couple of blows with Hajime. After firing five of his six shots, only three had managed to hit. I think in the anime, there was the most, like, the, the way that the bear was killed was the most awkward way, where he's, like, shot like a bullet, and it traveled, like, almost in slow motion, as if the anime was trying to make it look cool by going slow motion. Then it slowly traversed and, like, hit the bear in the head, and then it, like, fell down. And I was watching it, and I was like... Are, 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 did you just try to make that scene cool? What the fuck just happened? What, is the bear dead now? All right, whatever, move on. Now, the bear wasn't so dumb as to give Hajime a chance to reload. So, Hajime had to bring out another one of his tools, a makeshift flashbang that incorporated the ore green glowstone. The principle behind it was actually rather simple. We know that green glowstone absorbs mana to emit a faint green light. So just give him more mana, then more light, then it'll be act like the flashbang. But what the ore appraisal showed further was that when this ore breaks, the light within it will explode all at once in a big flash. Or just shatter it, sure. So what Hajime did was take a green glowstone, fill it to the brim with mana, then package it with a small Boom. fuse leading all the way to the center where a small blast rock would be found. Then all he had to do was light the fuse and three seconds later his homemade flashbang would explode. With the bear now disoriented by the light, Hashime fired One his shot. last round here to is, take the is, bear's arm clean off. No, this was exactly yet. what he wanted, because now he could eat that arm in front of the bear. Just like how the- Oh, the bear skill is actually quite important too. It's like the swipe one. He actually imbues the claw thing onto his gun so that the gun can be used like a melee sword weapon kind of deal. Bear had done to him. In the words of Nux, it was a pretty big flex. I mean, what? What was this video from? Four years ago. Maybe that was like a trending top. Like, I don't know. Pretty big flex used to be like a trendy word back in the day. When the bear saw this, it began to cower in fear since up until now, it had never encountered a foe that was stronger than it. Hajime had planned for this to happen, but what he didn't account for was the sharp pain he would get from eating that bear's arm. He thought that with his iron stomach ability, it would be just it still like hurts the him? meat of the wolves or the rabbits. Why does it still hurt he him? He didn't realize that the bear was a different species from them and absorbing its power brought with it a new wave of pain. Oh, okay, so even if we have Iron Stomach, that only applies on, like, the hurt only applies to, like, monsters that we have already ate. If it's a new one, then it's, like, a new pain still. Okay. When the bear saw Hajime struggling, it knew it had an opportunity to charge. But as we saw, Hajime used his lightning field to immobilize it, then finished it off once and for all with his gun. No, show Hajime the anime was style. was expecting there to be this rush show of the anime joy scene. after defeating this foe that he hated so much. But in actuality, he didn't enjoy the fighting at all. In mm -hmm. fact, he just wanted to avoid pain. He wanted to eat his fill, survive, and continue living. Okay. It's here he realized that after everything, he just wanted to go home. That's all he cared about. This is the turning point maybe about how Hajime doesn't really give a shit about revenge. And he just focused on getting home to his family and just leave me alone. That's the, that's the whole point of Hajime. So, he swore to himself that, by his own hands, he would find his way back home. And if anyone should stand in- I have a feeling we're not gonna get home for a long time though, guys. Like, is this ever gonna happen? ...his way, then they too would meet the same fate as this bear. Even if it's a anyway, god. Anyway, that's pretty much everything skipped from episode 1. Now, as much as I'd like to finish the entire season, yeah. I just don't think it's possible. Why? It would take at least 30 cut contents. Do On it! Top of that, the new season's already started, and yeah. with that comes a different- Bro, I need more content to leech from you! I need to more react to your content! Where is it? Of content. Yes, I know, I committed to more than Come I could actually handle this on. And I'm sorry if you only watch me for this type of stuff. Man, but this, this feels like I'm watching an anime- I'm like one of your you guys right now watching like a weekly series and I drop and it's like, What the fuck? Why'd you drop free run? Come on! Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to put this specific cut content on hold. Okay, that fine, doesn't mean it might fine. not return. It just means that for now, I can't set aside the time to work on this anime specifically. Well, I mean, that's a lie, because, you know, he has, like, how many more episodes after this? We got one, two, three. We have, like, fucking, like, five or five more to watch from him. I really hope you guys understand. Yeah, anyway, yeah, as always. Yeah. But go and like the video, guys. Subscribe to his channel. He always gives us good news about.
good information about you know stuff that we're already watching more in-depth material like that but we're gonna get through this already for the playlist and we're gonna slowly finish the series too but hey if you're still here and if you enjoyed this reaction we do these reactions live on stream 7 a.m pst on youtube and twitch every day so hope to see you there